What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Run Pure Sports Swing for the Fences show. You got me, Sweet Travis, with JT. We're going to break down tonight's MLB slate. We got tons of games to discuss. We do not have draft cheat here. I know DC is on a ton of shows. He has family in town. I'm sure DC would rather be here than hanging out with family. If we know DC, he loves to talk about all the K rates and everything, but we got JT Hayes to help us out with that. JT, how's it going? I know you're having some technical difficulties, but you are here for the people and you are battling. Yeah, it's been a hell of a day. The uh, the AC went out. It's the first really warm day here in Atlanta. And a uh, guy who comes to fix our uh, system um, tells us we got a bad breaker. So the power in the house is out now. And uh, it's all good. We've got a hot spot. And we've got <clears throat> Sweet Travis's candies that I'm excited to see which ones are his favorite. And we've got an exciting nine-game slate. Jake Swales is upset that Holden isn't here. I'm sorry, Jake. We all miss Holden. But uh, we're gonna we're gonna do our best to carry on and uh, and and continue in his footsteps. Yes, we will do that. Also, JT story here. You see that like uh, you see that like frosted donut that's over here. Where is it? It's right there. Do you see that one? Looks tasty. Right, so I got. Yeah, I tried to get one of those the other day at Dunkin' Donuts. I'll admit, I like the frosting kind of donuts, and that's what I ordered. JT it's Sunday morning, right before the MLB show, I picked up my coffee. I tried to get that and. Dude, they gave me a shitty donut that had nothing on it. They gave me the wrong one, so uh, I didn't eat it. And uh, I, I want a tasty donut, so maybe I'll have to do that tomorrow morning. Hopefully, you can help me win some giblets so I can buy some tasty donuts tomorrow morning. But we got to dive into the slate. Um, before we dive in, Jason did ask one question. Where was it? Uh, he basically asked, oh, can you give me two favorite pitchers from the 545 Turbo Slate? I believe that's the one at 535 or that one that's starting up there. Uh and I pulled it up just for you, Jason. Uh, Aaron Nola against Colorado. That seems like a stone cold lock, I would say. I think that'd be the best pitcher on the entire slate. JT, have you looked at that slate, or would you like me to get pitcher number two? I, I didn't. I'm taking a look right now, as uh, as we have done all day. There was a Lions Club, I think, was in uh, Discord early this morning, wanted to know about Cleveland's bullpen situation. So I jumped in there. Fallick jumped in there. Fallick. Actually had a great pick for a um, uh, a reliever in that game that worked out pretty well. So I'm taking a look right now at this slate. Yeah, uh, I, I think Eflin is good. And also Harrison, who's a lefty, going up against Miami. We know Miami's bad against them. And then, dude, we got Cabrera. I mean, Cabrera is definitely a stud. We haven't seen him pitch much this year. I don't know if he's on a pitch count. But those are the four that I'd be looking at. What about you, JT? Yeah, I think Harrison. I think Nola uh, are, are my two guys. Eflin is a really boom bust guy so far. He was boom bust. He was a little more consistent last season than he's been so far this year. So I would go, I'm, I'm interested in Harrison. And I think you're right. Nola against the Rockies. Hard to, hard to argue with that. Yep. Hard to argue that also someone where is in the chat. They're asking, what's this thing curving towards me? I guess it's over here. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's a nice little caramel glaze kind of donut. It's not whatever you're thinking there, uh, Juice 15. Uh, I think I think the mind's elsewhere and other people's are, but a um, bunch of glazed donuts, cookies, and other sweets and treats in the background for Sweet Travis. But uh, we're going to dive into this slate, JT. A um, lot to discuss. Um, weather seems pretty clear today. I don't think we have any weather issues to discuss, so that's obviously a nice thing about it. Uh, wind's been blowing out lately, so that's something we'll have to discuss as we go on. I know the wind's been blowing out on the East Coast a bunch. We've had a lot of home runs hit lately, but we're going to go game by game. We're going to break it down, and we're going to kick it off first with the Yankees and the Toronto Blue Jays, where we got Chris Bassett going against Luis Gill. And, man, Luis Gill's been really good this year. I mean, the price at 7400 is great for the production he's given up, he's had so far. The Blue Jays are not a great hitting team. This game is also in Toronto, which is a ballpark upgrade technically for someone like Gill. Like, I think you have to put him in the conversation. And then Chris Bassett, I'm not a huge Chris Bassett guy. I think there are spots where it makes sense. I don't think this is a spot where it makes sense to load up on him. Could he have a good game? Sure. But I just don't think the ceiling is worth it. Um, I'm curious your take on Bassett and Gill and some of the other bats in this game, JT. Yeah, I'll start with Luis Gill, and you're right. He has looked good. I'm a little concerned here with the price that he's at, the fact that he hasn't been able to get out of the fifth inning so far. He's got some control issues, and certainly if he can contain them, this is one of the lineups that has gotten off to a really, really slow start, the Toronto Blue Jays here. And like you mentioned, this park has not been good for offense. So 
he he would be in the mix for me, but nowhere near someone that I'm going to go heavy on. I'm not going to target this Yankees team right now. They, they've did a good job, at least it looks so far early in the season. They seem to have guys healthier. So I have mild interest in Yankee stacks, maybe more of the two-man variety. And then I'm with you on Chris Bass, and I'm just not going to target the Yankees right now. As far as the Jays bats, I've been trying to make them work because they're cheap. But when you look at why they're cheap, it's because they've got guys like Kavan Biggio, Kiermaier. Uh, I was getting fed Davis Schneider a lot all, over the weekend. And it, it just they just have not put it all together. And I'm not going to bet on them to do it today. So they probably stay in my very minimal as five-man stacks and really not a ton of interest in them overall. All right. Yeah, I, I'm in agreement. It sounds like bats-wise I don't love a lot in this game. Listen, if you've got like a one Soto or an Aaron Judge one off, I'm not going to argue against that. Trust me. There, there's no way I'm going to argue it. But pitching-wise, I, I do agree with the Gill stuff. Like he has found his way through it, but you do have to have some concerns there because the blow-up game does happen. It's just going to be a disaster. I'll definitely have a sprinkle, but um, it's a really good slate for pitching. There's a lot of good options that I want to get to and discuss um, that will break down as we kind of keep moving along. There's definitely some good options that uh, are strong at the top of the board for sure. It does feel like a slate where you're going to want to spend up at the pitching position today. And I talked about it on Sunday. I didn't think yesterday there was a lot of good chalk at pitching. You and I were kind of in agreement on that. And I don't think that's the case here for some of these spots that we're going to discuss later on, but Let's move on over to the next game. Let's go to Pittsburgh and the Mets. And these are not two pitchers I'm excited about. Martin Perez and Adrian Hauser. Although Martin Perez has shown two pretty good games. And listen, the New York Mets, even though Pete Alonso got National League Player of the Week, JT Hayes, not that under his belt, uh, it's not a great team, right? It's not a great offense. I think Perez could have a good game. But I also think you can make a case that the Mets could be interesting too in this spot. Um, are you rostering Martin Perez or are you rostering the Pirates or Mets here in this spot? No Martin Perez for me. He's been sun running a bit, um, just just getting very lucky, giving up some hard hit balls. Now, he doesn't get blown up a ton, but I do have some interest here in the Mets because his luck is going to run out. And I just think it's a good spot for guys like Pete Alonso and Starling Marte in particular. So definitely interested them in them as minis. And then Look, you can't argue with the results of the Pirates so far this year. And Adrian Hauser is the same Adrian Hauser as ever. He looks a little bit more wild this year. And I, I don't hate the bats in this game. I am not going to find myself getting to either of these pitchers. I, I would like the Mets. Like, the Mets are showing some ownership here at 9%. It's not crazy, but I there's other offenses I feel a little bit better about. But I will definitely have both of these teams in my five-man stack pool. And as far as the kid, um, I want to I want to say that he's laughing in here at his own jokes. Thank you, I appreciate that. And Redmond, one thirty is here. I'm, I'm think he's talking about the Mets, who I just said I like. So I'm not sure why he's so upset. Yeah, well, uh, he said, you know, we we did take two or three from the Braves. No, yeah. I mean it's it's fair. I'm just saying, like, uh, I mean it's. Uh, it's, I'm a Mets fan. I know how this works, right? And yeah. Adrian Hauser's on the mound, like uh, not super excited. They did have a last good week, though. At least I will, I will say that. Um, on pace, uh, that first week was really bad. Though. I mean, I, I was talking to my buddy, who's a huge Mets fan, my buddy Joe, who you know. Uh, I said the first week of the season, it couldn't have got, it, you couldn't have drew it up any worse, right? I mean, there was yeah. there was almost no worse scenario you could have drew up. So, uh, yeah, but they, well, they I, have- I, I would say this. I, I mean, you know, coming from the Atlanta side of things hasn't gone all that well. This revamp bullpen has been getting absolutely torched the last week, had a good first week, not so good the last week. Of course, the Spencer Strider news is not welcome. And, you know, we're going to talk about the Braves when we get to that game in Atlanta, in, excuse me, in Houston tonight. But, uh, you know, without Strider and some of these issues, if the Braves don't shore them up in the bullpen, the East is, is kind of wide open right now. Yeah, I mean, Revin, you're right. I, I I should have said it was a really great week. It was. Uh, and you know what else made it a great week, JT? I sent you that text message. Strider yeah. to the end of the season IL. It was it was tasty. I'll say that. Uh, I was excited about it. For you, because you're something that I won't call you. But go on. Yes, yes. But um, I do think Mets are in play. Like I, it's And I think Pirates, five mans, they're one of those that, like, I wouldn't be surprised if they were on the winner. They're not someone I want to be super overweight on. And, like, 
I I'm going to want Lindor and I'm going to want Alonzo. Like, and maybe more so in mini stacks, uh, but I think they're in play. You could make the case five man wise too. Uh, the Mets are definitely in the conversation today. So I'll be having some exposure um, here. Let's go to Kansas City. And let's go to the White Sox, JT. But before we do that, I did almost forget to mention, I need to mention this, and this is something you don't know, JT. We are doing a giveaway, okay? The man yes. is doing a $121 single entry ticket giveaway to a member. Now, we're not going to do it in the YouTube chat. We're going to do it in the live show chat. So I will open up the live show chat on my end. JT, what could we do to incentivize members to win this ticket? I, I This is off the cuff. You didn't know about this. I forgot to mention this pre-show to you. So what can we do to get the people going here with some good comments in the live show chat? No, I saw it. Congrats to the man on a huge hit in the PGA streets this week and saw that he wanted to give back to the community. Very generous with the single entry ticket there. And I, I think I think perhaps what we have to do is have people tell what they think is K Fallick's favorite treat that appears behind Mangone and how often does he eat it? Like What's that. his favorite treat and how often does he eat it? All right. So K Fallick's favorite treat and how often does he eat it? Let's let's yep. get that in the in and the it's gotta room. be behind Mangone. And 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 Let's add in a third piece to this. Why is it K. Fallick's favorite treat? We really need to know what entices him about that particular sweet. Okay, so that is the giveaway. Uh, if you want, get in there. Um, if if the 121 does fill, if it fills, we'll make sure to get you in the next day, right? The man will message you. We'll pick someone, and we'll talk about the, sh the comments that are in the live show chat, not in the YouTube chat, in the Run Pure Sports Discord live show chat. So, you know, and which we, we got to give a we got to give a deadline. We got to give a deadline. So let's say five twenty. Let's okay. say by five twenty Eastern, because tr Sweet Travis is in Denver. Let's say by five twenty Eastern, we're gonna pick. That's when we're gonna pick. All right, so we're going to pick. You have 17 minutes. Also, I want you to at K Fallick as well. K Fallick wants to know too as well. He wants to know what tasty treats people uh, want to want, think he eats that are behind me. So that's the rules. Get in there. Post your comments. AP is in there. He says, whatever that girthy chocolate thing is, the left of man goat's face is my vote. So, uh, yeah, that'll be the uh, that'll be the answer. I hope Kay Fallick is very, very busy right now and has no idea what's going on. That's what I hope happens. But so uh, I'll tell you one thing: we already have some, we already have some mistakes in here, but yeah. it cannot be Gefelt to fish. It cannot be a lot gay because they are not on, they are not on the map behind, behind Sweet Travis. M and M's make him horny. That might be true. Green ones. Yeah. So uh, also, I mean, jelly donuts, that's what Redmond says because he's Jewish. I don't know. I can't yeah. confirm or deny that. But the good news is maybe K. Fallick can let us know, too, because if he does, maybe the next time I see him, I can get him a tasty treat uh, as, as a gift. Uh, but we're going to keep diving through these games. We'll mention some of these funny comments here. Again, at K. Fallick, too. He loves being added. It's one of his favorite things at the Run Pure Sports channel. So make sure to at him. But um, let's dive into the next game. Uh, and it's KC and the White Sox. And uh Seth Lugo's on the mound and Seth Lugo has had a pretty solid season um he's already played the White Sox and dropped a little 17 point game on them yeah he didn't get a lot of strikeouts but you can play anyone against the White Sox right now JT let's see if the White Sox lineup is out because I'm telling you this team straight up sucks and it's Robbie Grossman Ben Intendi, Andrew Vaughn Gavin Sheets Len Sosa Dominic Fletcher Shoemaker whatever his name is Maldonado and Nicky Lopez I mean, this team is awful. Is Seth Lugo in the conversation? Uh, and then also, what would you do with the White Sox pitcher? I know the Royals been hitting hot bats. Are you going to play those bats or are you going to play Nick Nestrini? Nick Nestrini, I don't know much about him, but maybe you got some information here to help me out with this. Can't with that. Um, so I, I think in this one, where I'm going to go is mostly on Kansas City. I like the Royals. That's here quite a bit. Not as interested in, in Chicago, certainly not in five mans. So going to save them for mostly two mans and not interested in Nostrini and maybe a little bit of interest in Lugo. I don't like that price with not a lot of strikeout upside. 
right, you got the echo going, JT. So turn off the uh, the stream in the background, and you'll be good to go. Um, I do think we got to talk about the Royals a little bit deeper because I mean, AP's Royals been they've been flying the flag out lately, right? It's been a really good time to be a Royals fan. They've been playing some good baseball, and uh, the White Sox just aren't good in general. Now there's no Sal Perez. We got. Freddie Furman for 2.8K, which I know we've enjoyed rostering him at times. Vinny P has been crushing it. And because there's no Sal Perez, I mean, you get a little bit of a lineup bump. For someone like Nelson Velasquez, who's 3.8K in the four hole, can't ignore that. Melendez in the five hole. Bobby Witt has been on fire at 6.3. Are the Royals a stack that you're very interested in, JT? Like, is this going to be one of those stacks that you get high exposure to um, on this slate? Sorry, I froze. Um, yeah, I, I think Kansas City is going to draw ownership here. But as we saw over the weekend with Cincinnati, really any team that is going against the White Sox right now, we're going to have a lot of interest in. And I think for that reason, Kansas City is going to be high on my list here. So definitely Pasquantino, very interested in him. Very interested to see if Michael Garcia gets going, Bobby Witt. And you've got some savings down at the bottom of the lineup here. All right. Also, um, Kate Ballack has said that he is putting in his resignation to RPS. Uh, he blamed me. I, I kind of blame you, JT, but that's okay. Uh, you know, I Ballack is not happy, but continue to at him because deep down he loves it. Deep down he actually really loves it, and he's just he's just trying to – Get 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 on my nerves. Uh, he enjoys it, so keep adding him. We'll mention some of the comments we have till 5:20 Eastern. That's 12 minutes from now. So 12 minutes, we're gonna give away a $121 ticket from the man. Had a big day in the PGA streets, and not just him. A lot of people had a big day in the PGA streets. I saw some huge wins. It was a great time. Uh, I had some. I had a pretty good day in, in PGA. You know, I had some. I had a sweat too. Sweats are always fun too. So I had that. So uh, hopefully, I can uh, replicate it this coming up week. But Get in there, say which one of the treats behind me is Hey Falek's favorite treat and why, and post that in the Run Pure Sports Discord chat. But let's keep moving along again. Royals are going to be a team that I definitely have some interest in. We're going to the next game, a game that I definitely have interest in. It's Darius Vines versus Spencer Aragetti. Um, last time Spencer was on the mound, I stacked against him, and it was a good time. I'm thinking of doing that again here, uh, JT. I think these Braves are in play. I think these Astros are in play. I don't think we're going to like the pitchers at all. I think this is a spot to load up on the bats. The problem is if you play these bats, they're expensive. I mean, on the Astros side of the ball, the only guy that's below 3.7K is Dubon, and then it's Abreu at 3.7, and the rest are all above 4K. And then Braves side of the ball, there's not a lot of value. I mean, the one value that is there – is Luis Guillermo, but listen, I, he's fine, but do you really want to play him? I mean, I, I guess he helps make things work, but I'm sure he's going to be overowned in Brave stacks in general. So break down how you build this team because they're pricey. There is value amongst the lineups, but I think these are two of the top offenses and we have to have some interest. Yeah, uh, definitely against these pitchers. Uh, Darius Vines, not ready for – Major league talent on the offensive side of the ball just to show nothing at the big league level. And then Aragetti, as you mentioned, in his first start, really, really tough outing against Kansas City, who we like tonight again. And the Braves, for all their, pick, all their pitching troubles, the offense has what's been keeping them in games, has what's been helping them win games. And quite frankly, they're going to have to hit a lot this season based on the way the early pitching and injuries have been shape, shaping up. So it's no news to them that they're going to have to bail out a starting pitcher here. How do you build it? I think you're right that you don't want to have, you know, 25% Luis Guillorme. It's going to be a decision tonight of whether or not you're going to go with Tyler Glass now at that 11K price tag, whether or not there's enough value at pitching overall. If you're looking to build a game stack, it's going to be very difficult to get Glass now in here. So I think you're going to have to really more, more often than not pick one of these teams and go that route. They're both in such really, really good spots. I mean, it could be a better park, obviously. We'd be all over this maybe to a bigger degree if the game was here in Atlanta where it's hot tonight. But I think that these are two teams that you have to have exposure to if you're multi-entering. And I think they're definitely in the conversation for single entry as well. Yeah, agreed. And 
I mean, you might look at Glassnow's price in some of these offenses and go, I mean, there's no way I can afford these guys. But I'll just say this. We had a slate recently where Glassnow put up 46 on DK. He put up like 67 on FanDuel. And you know what you needed on that slate? You needed Ronald Acuna, who dropped, I think, 40 on FanDuel. And then you needed Shea Langoliers, who had a three-home run game. Like, what I'm getting at here is sometimes guys have such big ceiling games that they're just must-have plays in baseball. So, you know, I would do what I can to try and make sure I get some unique teams that are glass now with some of these top-tier offenses. It might not be easy to do, but I would be trying to make it happen just because I know how baseball works. And if someone hits two, three home runs and it's a quieter day in the MLB, you're just going to need them. And that can happen sometimes, especially in April, right? And especially in May. So make sure you try and get those guys in. I want to be overweight on glass now who we'll get to later on. And I want to try to get overweight on these offenses. It's clearly good spots for the Braves and the Astros. I think the Braves are a little bit better than the Astros here. I will at least call that out, but I do not want to ignore the Houston Astros in this spot. Well, Let's Jose Altuve has been on fire as well. So just to mention that, yeah. he's just been smashing. And he's one of those streaky players where when he starts to get hot, you kind of want to jump on the train. Yeah, and I mean, he was showing signs of that early on in April, right? He had 11, 7, 4, 7, 7, then 13, 2, and then boom, the boom happened, right? And he did it against Heaney and Navaldi, right? Not, not against no-name guys. So he's clearly going to on a nice little streak. I'm going to watch him out too, Bay. Let's uh, let's shift on over to the next game up and San Diego Padres and the Milwaukee Brewers. And speaking of, you know, hot teams, the Milwaukee Brewers have been on fire. Now, you could argue Corbin Burns cooled them off a little bit, but not that much, right? They got the Burns. I'd say if you had to pick, the Brewers won that battle against Burns yesterday. And the Brewers offense is hitting the ball well. And that lineup was not even great yesterday. I talked about that with DC on the show. Um, that lineup, it... it it, it could be a lot better today, right? It was that off day. I don't know if the line, yeah, the lineup is out. And it's a pretty decent line. They got a Domus back in there. Hoskins is in the five hole now, not in the two hole. So they did get some upgrades to the lineup from yesterday, and it's not that hard to upgrade it. I do think you have to make the case that this Brewers team, they're in the conversation today. Uh, they're going against Joel Musgrove. Musgrove hasn't been fantastic this year. Sure, he's shown moments, but. I think the Brewers could easily get to him. And Musgrove, at times, can lose control. If the walks are there, you're going to get some a lot of runs that are scored. And then you got Joe Ross on the opposite side. who He's shown some potential here. Now, it was against Cincinnati mainly where he showed that huge game. But I think there is opportunity here. But the Padres, I think they're a really good offense here today. And I think they're one you have to consider. This game is in Milwaukee. You could argue it's a park upgrade. Playing in San Diego is not great. And the Padres are a team that, they're going to project really well if you just use projections. Uh, the prices are really cheap on the Padres, at least. There are at least feel like values if you look at some of the price tags around the industry on these guys. Like, for instance, Bogart's at 4-4. That feels cheap. Cronenworth in the three-hole at 3-8. That feels cheap. Machado at 4-7. You could argue he could be above 5K. Profar in the five-hole at 3-2. That's nice. Kim at 3-8. Feels like a good tag. Even Jackson Morrell or like a Camp Pasano. 3-4 is cheap for a pretty good hitting catcher. Overall, JT, I think the Padres are a pretty good play here based on their prices and if you look at projections. So then the, the conversation is, are they good plays based on the ownership? That's going to be my question to you. Are they good plays based on the ownership, and are you taking shots on the Brewers like you did yesterday and the Padres? Yeah, th this is a tougher game for me, uh, and I'll start with the Brewers here. Corbin Burns – Gives up the leadoff home run, and he wasn't certainly peak Corbin Burns, right? It's not the type of game we expected to see, which is why I didn't like him as much. But he did enough to limit the damage and perhaps assisted by a weaker bottom of the order lineup for Milwaukee. That's not going to be the case today, as you mentioned. But then again, I don't expect Joe Musgrove to be as bad as he was this season as he has been in the early going on in some of these matchups and against the Cubs. It's a tough matchup for him, but I still have interest. I'm going to leave Musgrove in my pool. I'm not as high on Milwaukee tonight, and I'd like to be higher on San Diego, but the one thing that strikes me about this game for San Diego, they played Sunday night in L.A., they flew through the night to get to Milwaukee, and the last few seasons, that rivalry that we've seen between the Dodgers and the Padres leaves a little bit of a hangover. And that next game, maybe a little bit of a letdown game here, 
So I do have interest in Joe Ross as well. I'm not making a, a definitive statement one way or the other, but I could see this being a game where the Padres do well. I could also see it being a letdown game. And considering that we need some value, I'm willing to take some shots on Joe Ross, who hasn't looked terrible. So I don't find myself overweight on this game offensively. I see myself more so maybe on the San Diego side, a little bit less in the field. And Milwaukee, I don't think, is going to be very highly owned at all. So I think in line with the field there. And then I do have some interest in these pitchers just as a, as a result of the slate. All right. Also, keep those keep those uh, things firing in the chat for the $121 ticket about the Tasty Treats. I just read a bunch of them, and, uh, yeah, they're, they're interesting comments. Uh, we'll have to pick one for sure. JT, make sure you give them a read as well uh, and keep firing those away. And Falik was in the chat. You got three more minutes left, and you know what Falik said? How long is this going to last? Eight more minutes, he said five minutes ago. Falik uh, is not enjoying it, but uh, that's okay. Fire them away if you want that ticket. It's the only way to get it. And I agree with a lot of what you said when it comes to uh, this, uh, you know, this slate. You have to consider some offenses here. It's definitely interesting. Uh, JT, uh, do you have a favorite comment so far that's uh, the leader in the clubhouse? I, I will just say this. I'll just say this. Eight minutes, eight minutes longer, just like Hanukkah, right? Eight crazy nights, eight more minutes of this competition. It's not that long. It's not that long. I, I did like the uh, the early the early leader out of the gate was uh, – whoever this dude is who said green M&Ms make him horny because uh, uh, it was King Visions because obviously that uh, comports to the contest, right? Um, but we're getting, we're getting some good ones here. I'll, I'll give it, give it a couple more minutes and see what, uh, see what comes in here. Yeah. A couple more minutes, fire them away. Um, let's go over to the next game. Uh, and we got, let's see, this slate is what? Five, six. It's like nine games or so. Uh, next one up, I believe, just making sure I'm going on the right Yeah, it's the Chicago Cubs and Arizona Diamondbacks. This one is on the night slate, which if you don't know, we have night slate content after hours. So check that out. I'm sure I'll have that up a little bit later on for you guys. I'm sure this will be part of the slate as well. So, uh, I mean, this is a game I think we're going to have to have some interest in for sure. Um, we got Merrill Kelly and we got Ben Brown on the mound and Ben Brown's looked good, but. He doesn't go that long. The bullpen could get in there. JT, is this a spot to target the Arizona Diamondbacks? And what is your thoughts on Merrill Kelly pitching-wise? Because he's shown some pretty good games. One of them was a huge upside game against Colorado. I don't think the Cubs are this team that we're dying to target this year. But Merrill Kelly, I think he's one of those guys. I'm not saying he's matchup proof, but this isn't like we're going against the Braves or the Astros. The Cubs are good, but I think you can get by them. Merrill Kelly will not be owned in tournaments. I think he'll be very low owned. So what's your overall thoughts on how to handle the pitching and the hitting in this one? Yeah, so Kelly, I, I, I will say I'll probably keep him in my pool and maybe be, you know, he's not, like you said, he's not going to get much ownership as well just because the upside is there. I don't love this matchup against the Cubs, but when you're looking for on this slate, right, we're hoping to get really 20 points outside of glass now, and we'll get to glass now when we talk about that Dodger game. But outside of him, if you get 20 points, out of any of these other guys, you're kind of happy. And I think Merrill Kelly can do that. I think he can give up a little damage, but get enough strikeouts. And, and the other thing he offers is innings upside, right? He can get into the seventh inning. He can go a greater distance than some of these other pitchers can. So I do still have interest in him. I'm not going to have any Brown here. He's looked pretty good, but he's also looked pretty wild. And this is a team in Arizona that can run around the bases on him. So I have interest here in Arizona stacks. Very low ownership I'm seeing on Arizona right now, 5%, maybe a little bit more. So interest in Arizona stacks, some mild interest in Kelly. I'm out on Brown, and I will certainly leave Chicago stacks in my pool because anything can happen in Major League Baseball, but not prioritizing them tonight. All right. And, uh, you know, the, the time has ended. Uh, Trevor Bryan says, uh, what are we supposed to comment? I missed it. Well, it wasn't the live show chat. We're at that time. So uh, we'll, we'll sit through the comment shortly, though. Uh, Raxon, you missed out and you couldn't do it in the YouTube chat. Had to be a member in the Rump Here Sports chat. But he uh, said uh, he said it's the Oreo cookie. K Falik ditches the cookie part, allowing the cream to melt in his mouth. That was a pretty good comment. And then uh, Josh with a, a good comment as well. The the background looks like a, a construction porta potty spot. So uh, 
A lot of good comments. We'll pick one of them in the live show chat shortly, though, for sure. Just got to kind of give it a look. Um, time is ended, though. But, JT, let's go on over to the next team. I agree. Arizona Diamondbacks, they're going to be a good stack that I want to be overweight on as well. So we are arm in arm about that. Let's get to St. Louis and Oakland. And Mr. Sonny Gray is on the mound. I believe I saw he's on a 75 pitch count. Now, he is in a revenge game. I know it was a while ago, but revenge game against the Oakland A's. Everyone loves a good revenge spot. Uh, mm. 75 pitches. I don't think it's enough for me to roster him, though, here. And then you got Ross Stripling at 6K. And I don't want to attack Sonny Gray. I don't think I'm playing any Oakland bats here. I just don't think it makes that much sense unless it's like a crazy one-off that I think makes sense salary-wise to cheapy to help make things work. And then, you know, I haven't been playing the St. Louis Cardinals much this year, JT. Almost on every slate, I just – I minimize my stacks on them. I don't love playing the Cardinals. And I don't know, do I want to attack Ross Triple? I don't think it's the craziest thing. But in Oakland, I just think there's better spots. So this is an offense I think I'm going to be underweight on or maybe fade. I'm curious your take because I don't think this is a game I'm going to be well overweight on. I think I'm going to be well under the field on and maybe even fade some of these spots. Yeah, so I'll start with Sonny Gray here. Like I said, if we could get 20 points – out of some of these pitchers, we'd be happy. A little bit disappointed with the announcement that he's going to be on a 75 pitch count. I tend to take Ali Marmol at his word. He was, I think, 61 pitches in his first start, but he did get you 22 fantasy points on DraftKings. So he remains in my pool for that reason that he can do that. I don't love the 8,500, so I'm going to be lower on him for sure. Stripling at 6K against the Cardinals, who've been pretty anemic, is. Again, a guy that I'll leave in my pool, but not reaching to get to. And not not really excited about either of these offenses. I would say I'll probably have some Cardinals five-mans. Can't really say the same about the A's here in this spot. The park, the team, just not, not, really, not really feeling the A's five-mans tonight. So not a whole lot of interest on anything other than, I guess, Sonny Gray here in some lineups. Yeah, uh, we also, I don't know if you sift through some of the comments, JT. Uh, gummy, oh, yeah. worms for, gummy worms for Falcon. Are there gummy worms in my background or no? I don't, I don't know see any. I, see, this is this is why this this is why this competition is so fantastic because you actually have to listen. You have to follow some rules. These are all problems with some of our members. Listening, following rules, knowing where to find the schedule. I mean, it's just a day in, day out thing. But I think I have the winner, Travis. I think yeah. I have the winner. Well, before you say that, I do want to say, just imagine the image of Kay Fallick eating gummy worms with his shirt off, right? Like the comment says, with the can on him, right? Like the nice cold can on top. That just had me laughing. I know it's not going to win because there's no gummy worms in the background. And you're choosing it. There are gummy bears. Uh, and there's, there's some other interesting stuff in there. But um, JT, which one do you think the winner is? So I got to go back into the chat here, and, and I will say, Jimmy B, he comes really close, right? Those sweet squirrel semen strawberry puffs, you know. But then on the other hand, Travis, he did try to bribe us, and that's a big no-no here. We are huge on ethics, and as much as I love Jimmy B, love the work that he does, I I wish he would bring back the highest owned pitcher, highest scoring pitcher thing. I'm very disappointed that that disappeared. Seems like a natural progression from the Gold Dust play of the day. But I got to give it out to the winner. The winner is Chef Frank, the raspberry-looking luscious three times a week because they were mind kephalic of nipples. And who mm -hmm. doesn't love a good nipple? Chef Frank is the winner of the ticket. Sorry, Jimmy B, next time. Yeah, I agree. So, Chef Frank, I am going to send that to the man right now so he can reach out to you. And he'll send you a DM. Check, check, Chef Frank. Check to see if, uh, just in case you need to accept a friend request, sometimes there's issues with that. But I think you should be good. Uh, that will be the winner, though. Congrats to you, Chef Frank. And you're in the chat. I don't have to DM you. So uh, love it. You are the winner for sure. Yes, the old Sweet Travis graphic was good. We'll have to try and bring that back at some point. I'm sure we got it in the archives somewhere. But, um, yeah, so... JT, though, uh, we got the winner, $121 ticket. Uh, if it's still open, get in there. Uh, let me see if it's open. I'm curious if you can get it. Uh, yeah, it's it's filling quick, though. It's filling very quick. Uh, 66 spots left, I think. So try to get in there today if you can. If not, I'm sure we can get you in there another day for sure. He's DMing you now, and it sounds like the conversation's going on. 
JT, though, let's move on to the next set of games. And uh, next one up, two games left, Cincinnati and the Seattle Mariners, Frankie Montas and George Kirby. And uh, JT, um, George Kirby has struggled this year, right? And sure, he had that one good start, but the last two have been bad. It has not been your George Kirby-type performance. But George Kirby gets the Cincinnati Reds. And JT, if you and your little softball team was out there on the mound tonight playing against Cincinnati Reds, I would consider rostering you. I would be like, JT, you are in play at 4K. You know, I don't know what you think about yourself against the Cincinnati Reds, but I feel like George Kirby has upside. You have to like him. And then Frankie Montas, I think Seattle's disappointed a bit, and Frankie Montas has shown upside. I think you cannot argue what the upside is. The downside is, is he costs 9K. 9K is not cheap. I would rather Frankie Montas at 7-8 or 7-2. So break down the pitching, and also maybe the hitting comes in play here as well, JT. What do you think? Yeah. Uh, so for Cincinnati, a great weekend against the White Sox. And I think that's the thing that stands out to me the most here, right? They had a fabulous matchup all weekend long with White Sox pitching. They had fabulous wind-dated weather all weekend long in a very small ballpark. Now they go to a much better pitcher than they've seen all weekend in George Kirby. Regardless of the results, the soft contact has still been there for him. And they go to a, an environment that's really unfriendly for hitters. The only reason that I'm going to keep some Cincinnati in my pool is because of how vicious they have been, how relentless they have been on the base pass. These guys, every time I turn around yesterday, it was another Cincinnati Red stealing a base, stealing second, stealing third. So I do think, though, that this matchup lines up pretty well for a bounce back for Kirby. I don't hate Montes, but like you, I hate that 9K price point. This Seattle team, though, man, they have looked bad. This is... At least so far, it looks like an ill-constructed team. So they really are much, much lower on my list of offenses that I want to target here. Much more interested in the pitching than I am anything else in this game. I'm on mute. That was bad. You, uh, <laughs> you got me there. Uh I was distracted because, and I was mentioning, hey, the pitching's good on this uh, in this game. I think I prefer that a little bit more. But uh, I was mentioning, I saw a Big T tweet go out, and he tweeted out, we're doing some giveaways at Run Pure Sports. I don't know if you ought to be a member or not. I don't know what Big T's going to do with it. But we got, Big T's got some Masters gear. He's got some nice, uh, you know, little piece, one-piece zips or, uh, you know, quarter zips, I should say. Uh, he's got the hats. A, a golf cover for your driver, um, coasters, tons of cool Masters gear that we're going to be giving away. Also, if you haven't signed up at Run Pure Sports and use that code uh, RPS15, you'll get 15% off. We do giveaways for uh, you know each week for a tournament. If you use the Run Pure Sports logo and you get into the contest, we give away $500 to the Masters if you took it down and you were using the Run Pure Sports logo. So tons of giveaways coming up. If you haven't signed up, it's definitely a great time too. And also we got the... Uh, we got the Prez watching us, uh, so be on your best behavior, JT. Be on your best behavior. And uh, I'm not of course, who are speaking on you. I don't have anything to worry about. I know. I'm just letting you know that the Prez is watching and the soldiers are watching, okay? so uh, Soldiers are always welcome. Up. Soldiers are always welcome on shows that JT is on. Love those guys. And we did have a member takedown, 100K tournament with the Run Pure Sports logo. Saw that this morning on Twitter in PGA. Very nice. Yes, we did. And Kay Fallick, thoughts on the chair? Um, Fallick, I don't care what anyone's thoughts are on the chair because uh, I have a broken bone and this chair is just way easier than the other chair I had. And you know what? I'm not shipping a chair to my house and putting it together. I don't got time for that. Okay. I'm not, I'm not doing that shit. I'm trying to heal up and get healthy. That's the goal. So you're stuck with King Arthur's chair for now. But anyways, let's keep moving this thing along. Uh, and again, Awesome slate tonight. We got a big game to talk about here that's going to matter a lot. It's a late night hammer, JT Hayes. Everyone loves a good late night hammer. Oh, press thoughts on the chocolate dong makes the hand go. I think, I think the late night hammer is next to your face. I think that's, yes. that's going to be cresting late night, the late, baby. The late night hammer is right here. Um, late night uh, hammer for Mangone. Late night hammer on a Monday. Who doesn't like it on a Monday night, right? Start the week off right with a little late night dong hammer. But, um, and also, we got we got Uncle T in the chat. JT, before we actually go to that game, I do have a question. It has to do with you and Uncle T. 
Who is in charge of the old guys pod now? Yeah, definitely a topic for discussion in the coming months. Uh, you know, Uncle T has more seniority than I do, so I, I would I would yield to his senior status, but uh, we'll, we'll have to see what happens. Yeah, Uncle T says we got to have a meeting, so the meeting will be ha- held when it comes to the uh, football season, which, listen, it'll be right around the corner. We also have NBA coming up. I don't know how excited you are for the playing games. I don't know if you're going to be uh, – are you going down to the ATL to get your Hawks gear on and support the team uh, tomorrow night? Yeah, you know, I, I'll tell you, I like it. I liked it more for the Hawks if Trey Young hadn't returned. Uh, the, the team was just seemed much more, uh, much more in sync, and um, so I, I don't know that I'll be making those. But I am excited for the tournaments here, the the, the DraftKings tourneys for the playoffs. Those are uh, definitely an exciting time to make sure you get into the Discord. Oh, I'll be in there. Don't worry. The Discord will be popping. I can't wait. I'm excited for those slates coming up. And uh, I, I'm feeling good about the NBA playoffs coming up. I, I love all the matchups. I'm going to be posting stuff on Twitter. I can't wait. I am super, super excited about it. But um, what are you laughing at in chat? Kay Falick in there, JT? <laughs> <laughs> the, good news, the good news about the contest tonight is we have gotten – We've got fired up K Fallick now because he's gotten 700 notifications in the Discord and he's angry and he's funniest when he's angriest. It's beautiful. Yes, everyone loves angry Kevin Fallick, especially angry Fallick where people are asking him questions and he goes, it's not in my core, right? Or he's like, I, I'm playing the late games or whatever. So, you know, that, that's the favorite Fallick. Uh, so, Rance, did we close shop and run through bets? Uh, I mean, it's. It's, we still have it. If you want the bet side, you can get that package. It's still there. It's just not no. It's not classified as Rump Your Bet. So the shop is open. It's just a little rebranded and renamed. So the shop is still there. You can walk into the antique shop whenever you would like. Uh, but JT, we've stalled enough. Let's get to that last game of the slip. After yeah. we do that too, we'll give out our stacks. We'll give out our favorite play of the day, uh, favorite pitchers as well, and uh, maybe a contrarian play as well. Um, so – be sure to check out the Eiffel Tower play of the day from JT Hayes coming up shortly. And also hit that like button if you guys could. I don't know what the likes are. We're going to give the plays out no matter what because it's been a fun show. But we got 426 watching. There's no reason you shouldn't hit that like button for us. But let's get to this game. It's Tyler Glass now season, JT. And listen, Tyler Glass now is the reason. I mean, he's not the reason, but part of the reason why I won that FanDuel seat. So I have a soft spot for Mr. Tyler Glass now. Also, the other day, I had a pretty good sweat with Mr. Tyler Glass now. He's been nothing but good to Sweet Travis. I'm sure he's been good to you as well. I want to be well overweight on him, and I know he's one of the chalkiest pitchers on the slate, but I just don't care. The matchup against the Nationals is too good. We've seen pitchers go to the Dodgers and thrive a ton, and this is just an elite pitcher. I think ceiling performance are going to keep coming from him, and I'm going to keep going back to the well from Tyler Glass now. I'll get different other ways on this slate. That's at least my plan. I'm curious your plan, especially with Mitchell Parker on the mound, who I know nothing about, does not look like a great pitcher, in my opinion, uh, just looking at the at the uh, picture on DraftKings. And he's got to deal with the Dodgers, who are coming off Sunday Night Baseball, which I know you get a little cautious with, but I'm not worried about it. I mean, the Dodgers are worth spending on today. What's your thoughts on this game? Not cautious about the Dodgers remaining at home. It's just like playing on Wednesday night and then playing another game on Thursday night. They did not have to travel. They're still mild concern about how the teams get up for that series. But realistically, it's the Padres that get up for it more than the Dodgers. The Dodgers, they're facing that now as good as they are. Every stadium they go into, every opponent that comes into Los Angeles, they want to give their best against this team of absolute all-stars. So, no. Let's start with Glass now, though. You know my rule on these things and how much I hate targeting pitchers that come off their best possible type of performance. Outside of a no-hitter, I mean, seven innings, 14 strikeouts. He only threw, I think it was 84, 85 pitches. The challenge here on this slate is none of these pitchers come close to offering the upside that Tyler Glass now does. Now, there are some concerns with this Washington lineup. Sure, you have Joey Gallows of the world who are in there who are just going to give you two, three strikeouts a game. But the rest of this team is built to put the ball in play. Still, if you're looking for a pitcher with the best chance of giving you 20 to 25 points on this slate and safely, 
that's Tyler Glass now. So I don't know that I'm going to go too far over the field here just because he does limit you. He does force you into one of those Luis Guillorme. Or if you if you have a lot of him, you're going to have to, and you're using an optimizer and you're doing multi-entry, you're going to have to manually back down some of these crappier plays like a Cavan Biggio, like what I think a Luis Guillorme is today. And you're going to have to be careful about these switch hitters in the Dodgers lineup because as soon as this kid Parker is gone, all those guys at the bottom, the Kikes, the Taylors, they all become very, very vulnerable. So I'm all in on these Dodgers regulars. Absolutely. Not a lot of interest in Washington. I'm not playing Parker. And I don't think you can argue with the fact that Tyler Glass now offers the highest floor as well as the best possible ceiling on this slate. Yes. And uh, Raxin, I'm calling bullshit, okay? Last now hasn't had back-to-back double-digit KO games since 2021. Well, here's why I'm calling bullshit, Raxon. He played two games in 2022. The only data you got is 2023 yeah. and this season. It's not, it's not like it's just not real, real data. I mean, now I'm not saying you're not right. Like, I think you're right about your numbers, but I'm just saying your numbers don't make sense because of 2022. He didn't yeah. pitch that year. I mean, he played two starts. So um and also another thing, JT, and I correct me if I'm wrong. You're more the baseball guy than me. Um, the Dodgers, when pitchers show up there, they always get better, right? And mm-hmm. when you got a guy like Glass now showing up to the Dodgers, I just think you're going to get the best of the best. You might look back on this season. I think he could be the Cy Young winner. I mean, of course, pitchers are going down quick, but I just think it's a really, really good spot. So I'm in on it. It's against the Nationals. I'm calling it happens tonight. We get the 10 or more strikeout game, and I understand he's chalk. I understand he's the best pitcher on the slate, but I just don't care, especially this time right now. And Raxon, to be fair, he's crossfaded, so uh, we'll be nicer. But uh, they're crossfaded. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what crossfaded means, but I will say, look, I I do subscribe to that. Crossfaded crossfaded is what I was at the party. That's what that is. Oh, okay, all right. Well, that's not. That doesn't sound good. Um, but. (laughs) I, I will say the, the issue here with with not playing glass now is, again, you don't need him to get 10 strikeouts. You don't need him to get 14 strikeouts. If he goes seven innings and is efficient and gets you six strikeouts, that's probably going to be the top scoring pitcher on the slate. So it's hard to argue. Yes. And also, like on the past slates that I talked about, like I, I think yesterday was going to be a very high scoring slate, like hitting wise. Um, And there were a lot of home runs hit. Uh, Maybe it wasn't as high scoring as I thought, but I don't know if today's going to be like mega high scoring all around. Like, I think there's good spots that you can target, but if Glassnow goes off and let's say like Aaron Judge hits two or three home runs, you're just going to need that combination more than likely, right? It just, that's how it works. So I'm perfectly okay with it. I want to be loaded up on him and uh, there you go. Natty Lights and Blunts. JT, what is your thought on Natty Lights? When's the last time you had a Natty Light? It's it's been a little while, and then, uh, you know, no, no, none of the Blunts for me. Yeah, no, no Blunts for me either, but uh, maybe for Holden. Holden maybe is, uh, you know, maybe he's on some Blunts and some Natty natty Lights right now. But uh, JT, uh, that wraps up the slate. Doesn't wrap up our conversation. We got to close it out uh, here. Um, Let's go first to... Favorite stack. So um, one thing I want to call out, and we didn't really discuss this too much. Um, one thing that I do in DFS is I look for a stack that I think is overowned. Okay. I think that's the St. Louis Cardinals today. If there's a team that I am going to be lower than the field on and go underweight or fade, it's going to be the St. Louis Cardinals today. That'll be an offense that I'm definitely going to be underweight on. Why don't you give that JT and then give me your top three stacks and then I'll follow it up with my top three stacks. Yeah, I, I I tend to agree with you here on the Cardinals, the park. It, it's just it's just not my favorite. If I'm looking at an overowned team, man, I, I think even at six seven percent, I, I think the White Sox are are more are more highly owned than they should be. I, I can't get all that excited about playing this White Sox team. And I, I mean, even though Lugo is just a, an okay pitcher, I, I'm still not excited about the White Sox. Yep, there you go. So that'll be that'll be uh, the offense that JT is lower on. What about uh, top three offenses today, JT? Who do you got? 
Yeah, I, I mean, I'm seeing lower ownership here. I mean, I, for this size slate, for the matchup, it looks like the Dodgers are the clear number one. We said that we both like them, but I like Atlanta. I like Houston, and I like the Mets against Martin Perez. Yeah, I, uh, I I tend to agree with a lot of those. Um, so for me, and I know it's going to be tough to get these bats. I, I I want Atlanta. Um, I want to get Atlanta today. I'm currently not getting a lot, but I'm going to make sure I get a little bit more of them. Um, I agree on the Mets. I think the Mets are one of those teams that, based on some of the price tags, they're going to help you be able to get the glass now combination. So I'll put them in there as well as one of those teams. And then I'll go with the Dodgers. Um, and if I do spend up, right, if I spend up for these big bats that we talked about, um, I'm going to have to have some cheaper stacks to make it work or at least have a punt SB2. I'll have a lot of glass now, but I'm going to try to get overweight on. That's one thing I'll try to adjust with the projections. I adjusted that yesterday. I went lower on some of the more expensive ones. That means my SB2 is probably not going to be like Merrill Kelly and George Kirby, right? It's going to have to be a little bit of a cheaper option, but I'm okay with that. I think there's enough on the board that I can get the job done with that. Um, JT, go to your favorite, uh, give me your favorite overall hitter on the entire slate. Uh, man, it's tough. I, I, I'm always tempted and I, I try not to pick on or take the Braves on these things. Cause everyone knows that's my team. I'm definitely going to have plenty of Braves, but man, Starling Marte, the price, the matchup, he steals bases. I like Starling Marte a good bit on this slate. All right. I, I like that one. That's a, that's a good call there. Um, my favorite overall play JT, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be lame. It's, it's going to be Ronald Acuna. I just think Acuna is the guy today. I, I want to jam him in. I feel like this slate is very similar to that last slate that we had. So he would definitely be the guy for me. Um, let's go with a contrarian option, JT, one that maybe people are not getting to as much. Um, I, I think this guy's going to be contrarian. I, and by contrarian, I mean, probably in that like 10% range, not a 1% guy, but um, I think it's Vinny Pasquantino. Vinny P, the Italian knight. I'm going to take him. Uh, I think he's going to be a really good player. I think everyone's playing Jake Cronenworth over him. Am I wrong about that? I mean, I, that's the thing about the Padres. If they're getting steam, it makes Joe Ross a very interesting play in tournaments. If the Padres are getting steam, playing on Sunday night, going halfway across the country, coming off the yeah. high of winning on Sunday night baseball in L.A. Um, but I don't know if you're right that Pasquantino is going to be contrarian. Okay, I won't, and then I won't give that. Uh, g g give me one. Give me a contrarian one, then I'll keep looking. Um, contrarian play for me... Uh, I would say Cattell Marte is a contrarian play at second base. I like that one. Uh, I'll go with this uh, contrarian play. Let's go with Gabriel Moreno, a uh, contrarian catcher that people won't spend up on. I do like the diamond back. So we'll go with him. Uh, I think he could be that guy. And then uh, who's the pitcher that you're going to be most overweight on. That's going to be like a big stand on this slate. Like whichever pitcher, you know, you're going to the slate. Could be like for me yesterday, it was Jack Flaherty. It was looking shaky, JT. I didn't freak out, though. I was going to text you and say just Flaherty sucks. But he got there got the job done the 18th. He was my guy yesterday on the show, and he got the job done. Who is your guy that you're going to be well overweight on that's going to be a big stand today? I I think I think it's going to end up being – I think it's going to end up being George Kirby for me. All right. George Kirby it is. I'm not going to give glass now. That's a lame answer. Um, I'm not going to give him. Um, I'm going to go to a cheap guy or a cheaper guy on this slate that I'm going to be overweight on. That's going to be a big stand for me. Um, I'm going to go with Seth Lugo. I'm going to have a lot of Seth Lugo. I want to keep attacking the White Sox. That's one of my strategies here throughout the month of April, probably into May, probably all season long. As long as this lineup sucks and my boy Luis Robert is not in the lineup, I want to attack it. And Jake, I agree. Louis, Lou Gill. Good play. But for me, it's Seth Lugo. I don't mind the, the Gill call. But for me, it's Seth Lugo. He's going to be a pitcher that I'm going to be well overweight on. When I make my adjustments, when I get off the show, if I don't have a lot of uh, Lugo, let's say I only have 5%, I'm going to say I can't use that run. We got to keep moving and keep finding the team that's a combination that's a little bit better. So that's my thoughts there, JT. Uh, final thoughts here before we get on out of here. It's a good Monday night slate. And as always, on these nine-game slates, it's fine. You want to play the – 
popular offenses, the Dodgers here, the uh, Dodgers and the Royals seem to be uh, the the chalk, probably the chalk pairing. But don't forget, it's usually one of these other teams that's a good offense. I'm talking about Atlanta, I'm talking about Houston, I'm talking about the Mets right now, maybe even the Pirates. Usually those offenses that are a little cheaper, maybe mix in some of those higher priced big bats. I think that's the way the slate goes. It's not going to be won by the chalk offenses. I like that. And uh, do you think the Mets are chalk? I think they're going to gain some ownership, but I don't think they're the chalk. Well, I'm just curious. No, they're, they're 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 showing third behind the Dodgers and the Royals, but I think they should be maybe even a little bit higher. And matchup got a little bit better for Merrill Kelly. Looks like Saya is heading onto the IL. Yes, and that's not nothing. I was going to mention that as well and touch upon it. Um, we got to get on out of here again. We got tons of content this week. I don't know when the NBA shows are coming. That's something you'll be in the Discord. You'll be getting some uh, info on that. We'll be definitely doing tons of NBA stuff for the playoffs here. It'll be a fun week for that. Also, some of the core plays are already piling in. We got Steve Boyd and Seavers. They already posted up their core for FanDuel and DraftKings. So get on over there and check out those cores over at Run Pure Sports. Again, use that code RPS15 for 15% off. You'll also have DC. He'll be back tomorrow. No cheat cheat for him today. He's Got the family in town. He'll be back tomorrow. He'll have his core up, though. So if you want DC's winners, go get his core. And if you want, use his code DC15 to get you 15% off instead. But that'll wrap it up for us, guys. Thanks a lot for joining us here on the Run Pure Sports Swing for the Fences show. For me and JT Hayes, we will see you guys later.